This is Sniper signing in to Red Alert 3 on the map, Infinity Isle. Spawning on the right side as the Blue Empire. Going for that generator dojo play. This is Superpower. And spawning on the left side of the map as the Yellow Allies player getting that wall off and preemptively and that boot camp making some javelin troopers. This is CCZD Tony. All right, all right. Standard attack dog scout coming out from Tony. Gonna want to make sure or see if he can lock down any stray infantry units trying to go out and capture this oil derrick, which it does not appear that will be quite possible as there are two Imperial Warriors on top of an undeployed dojo core. Yes, he will deploy there. I will imagine he will be getting an engineer straight out and capture that derrick post haste. Looks like that Javelin Trooper did switch on over to that laser lock mode and take down this garrisonable structure here. It's a nice little preemptive strat uh, to stop your opponent from garrisoning that structure and invariably or inevitably whittling down or trying to whittle down your oil. Derek, very nice, very nice indeed. Do we have, oh, we have a fast third refinery coming out of superpower and an MCV move. MCV is already up on the cliffs. Say what? That's actually building a little slowly. Is he on low power? I think he's on low power. Yeah, that's a wait. That's a refinery. That's a fourth refinery. <laughs> um, that's a fourth refinery. Superpower. Um, greedy? Question mark? Greedy? Dot dot dot. And now getting that generator online will likely. I do believe he. I think he's on low power right about now. Low power is definitely no bueno. Yes, it's not so good. Uh, we have a. Vindicator coming out and it looks like okay yeah huh I thought it was I thought it was still one bomb or it was one bomb to kill an Imperial Warrior I guess I'm wrong it's two bombs to kill an Imperial Warrior and we have a little pack of peacekeepers coming right up now what could we see to follow this up well let's take taking a look let's see superpowers throwing down an extra dojo just to make sure and he has another one on um not unpacked it's still packed up and he's gonna be using that for the crushes on these peacekeepers should they get too close and now what could, what we could see out of this we know that we have a, a airfield and an mcv move third third ref coming online for tony right now but tony could make he can make a vehicle transition say go for say if he got some let's say cryocopters and or apollo fighters here and then went for some guardian tanks and or riptide acvs on the ground he can get, or actually, if he maintains this cloud of peacekeepers, then uh, multi gunner IFVs would actually work as well. You can garrison the peacekeepers inside the multi gunner IFVs, and here comes that armor facility. So I would not be shocked whatsoever if we saw some multi gunner IFVs or riptides coming out and, and looking to deal with this mass of Imperial Warriors. These Imperial Warriors, they're pretty strong. <laughs> they may not, they may not have quite the damage output that the tank busters have but that when they're in this many numbers i guess when the when the numbers for the imperial warriors are just this big they do certainly have some nice advantages to them takes that's very nice micro indeed right there from tony uses his peacekeepers to take down that dojo core and switches them on over to the shield or all their riot shields so they can avoid the bonsai charge from the imperial warriors making tangos do rock up but they are gonna have to pull back as there is just too much DPS coming out from Tony. There's like superpower setting up this preemptive defender VX turret in a tie air mode. Blowing down another turret uh, somewhere. Wouldn't be surprised if he sent that thing back down here, say like here or here and guarded the refineries. Or another one out on the water for that matter on his naval refinery. That would not surprise me very much either. And uh, we have a command hub down on the fourth water expansion and actually there it is just taken for CZZD Tony now now he is officially on equal footing with superpower but hold up uh, that's uh, that yeah that that's nice micro um, trying to see he's trying to save the masses uh, they're not trying to save the big group of peacekeepers by microing back one at a time but hold up we do have a transform and one Apollo fighter does go down and he has enough I think think superpower actually has enough well mm, well he i'd say he has enough to camp the airfield but not with the multi-gunner ifv and the multi-gunner turret there i think eh, that might have been just pushing it a little bit just a little bit looks like we do have some riptides 
trying to head out. This is very nice harassment coming out from Tony. Very nice forcing that harvester off the line. And now I think Tony should have some semblance of an idea of just how long he's had that uh, or he's been at an economic disadvantage. Vindicator taking a lot of anti-aircraft fire. And it looks like Tony's starting to make a bit of the transition that I kind of, that we kind of predicted a few minutes ago. Yes, getting some of those multi-gunner IFVs out, but right now he's using them predominantly for some anti-air purposes as the infantry count of superpower has indeed dwindled. We have that nanotech mainframe going down, so we're going to see some tier 3 coming out very, very soon. And now what we could see with these Striker VXs out on the map, if they go, let's say if they go, well right now I think it's best if they stay on the ground, but... If, let's say if they went air mode, and let's say Tony transitions to armor. If Tony transitions to armor, then suddenly the Striker VX is just jump in the air mode and kaboom. You have a very good counter to the armor. But then the IFEs rock up and you'll more, and Superpower would more than likely have to send his Mecha Tangos in and try and neutralize the IFEs. That way, very nice getting point defense drones on all of his vehicle army, by the way. Very nice play indeed. But uh, continuing that thought from just a moment ago, if the biggest thing with Superpower's army right now, or Empire armies in general, is just they are very, very micro intensive. I mean, not to, that's not to say that other army, other uh, factions, that the Allies and Soviets are not micro-intensive. It's just uh, the Empire is perhaps just a little bit more so due to their transforming units, such as to the two critical units out of the Mecha Bay, being the Mecha Tango and the Striker VX. But hold the phone. So he gets that collector, but pays for it with three. Yes, he pays for it with three Mecha Tangos. Probably four. Probably up five. Oh, no, okay. Four. Uh, five, six, seven. That was not worth it. That was so not worth that fight. Oh my, oh my, oh my. Looks like two Riptide ACBs do catch that Yari Mini sub out. Uh, I would personally, I'd love to see a uh, naval switch. What I honestly love is some shogun battleships and some sea wings right about here i would beyond 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 love that i mean granted i guess superpower is kind of already <laughs> he's already made the switch he's got wave force artillery and yuriko omega <laughs> it's, like, it's like every time i see a game from superpower i see a yuriko omega in there okay so yes tony's rolling with four cryocopters now How, wait is he still building cryocopters yes wait what wait okay so he's up to five cryocopters now. This is going to be a bit of a wonky situation for superpower, I think. Looks like that. Looks like a cryo shot did get called down on that instant generator, and the Riptide ACV rocked onto shore just long enough to finish it off. Looks like more cryocopter vindicator harass freezing down a collector. Very nice on superpower already getting that collector rebuilt or requeuing it, so that as little mining time is lost as physically possible. Yeah, just that one little riptide, just kind of, just kind of going around back there. One multi-gun turret holding the front line. I would not be surprised whatsoever if these uh, wave force artilleries, when they're done dealing with this riptide, came up and just blapped this thing right out of existence. Wave force artilleries are exceptionally, exceptionally powerful indeed. Very much so indeed. Both sides still maintaining their oil derricks. Their this little bit of lost mining time here and here for superpower but the early uh, eco lead that he had for that uh it should it should compensate at least a little bit it should compensate for it do we have any naval for tony no we do not we still have the, <laughs> we still have the three multi-gunner turrets guarding that refiner i wonder what was going through his head to make him put down three multi-gunner turrets <laughs> Uh, wait, whoa! Wait, how many is that? Well, one of them just got thrown to the ground by Yuriko Omega, but counting the one that just got thrown, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Uh, he had nine cryocopters, now eight. What? Uh, okay. <laughs> okay, never a dull moment. Wait, is that a spy? Is there a spy in that? I think there's a... There's a spy in that. There's a spy in that. Uh, and it just got wasted. Well, I mean, Yuriko Omega was right there anyway, so I don't think that would have done too much of 
a different or made too much of a difference even if the spy had gotten out and here comes that guardian tank switch if there if tony can get enough guardian tanks onto the field coupling with this many cryocopters in the sky uh i think superpower would become very very hard pressed to stop that kind of attack granted superpower does have a very powerful ground force here but one thing i am noticing is that, is that a rock that's a rocket angel hey we're seeing rocket angels <laughs> you don't see those very often in uh, 1v in multiplayer. Very nice, very nice unit actually. The Rocket Angel, I actually really like the Rocket Angel. It's just not up. Oh, Yuriko, 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 ah, and she dead. She gonna get his blap. Yeah, she, yep, she got shattered by a peacekeeper. Well, <laughs> Yuriko was nice while she lasted. Anyway, it was it was nice seeing Yuriko while she lasted. But anyway. Back to this what I was saying a second ago, you're, the Rocket Angel is actually a very, very nice unit. I really like the unit itself, but it's just they're very flimsy against something like the Allied Apollo Fighter, which is, you know, just absolutely manhandling these jet tangos that are in the skies right now. Tsunami Tank's going to go forward. We're going to see about getting that crush move off. Now, if Tony makes a full Guardian Tank transition, which he is definitely doing, was that a high technology? I think he may have just gotten high technology. Uh, as I... I saw like the giant little light up effect on all these cryocopters, so I'm assuming that was high technology. Uh, we don't really see high technology upgraded multiplayer that much, do we? I don't believe we do. But anyway, to count, to effectively counter this many guardian tanks and what I'm assuming will be a gr ever growing guardian tank force. Well, hold the phone. We had that's just a couple of reptiles going to get some harassment off back here. Let's see the tank. He does pull the tangus. Tank, uh, superpower does and will be responding momentarily. Oh, pulls the chopper VXs as well, just for good measure. The Yuri Miso does still go down. Could have saved it, I think, but you know, that's okay. Another Yuriko Omega gets frozen, and another Yuriko Omega gets killed. <laughs> but uh, to, can to counteract that many Guardian tanks, he superpower could go mass, mass, mass Tangu and just blap his way through the Apollo fighters and just start hounding the. Uh, cryocopters, which I mean, with the force that he has, if the strikers were on the, it's the only thing about using strikers on the ground is that the cryocopters will come forward and they will shrink you. That's just, <laughs> that that's just all there is to it. They're going to be shrunk at some point or another. Uh, taking free shots from the uh, multi-gun IVs is never good, that good though, but does wind up blapping one right there using those way those way force artillery. But here we go, the engagement. Jet Tango is jumping into the sky. Several Apollo fighters already out of action too I believe the other two way he's pulling back superpower it does look like he will be pulling back quite frankly I think he could have maybe stood in for well, no with all these guardian tanks pressing forward I eh, yeah okay I, I can understand superpower pulling back with that many guardian tanks pressing the front it is good to want to be a little more on the defensive side well that one little rocket angel does get taken down by those multi gunner IFVs so now the air power is going to be restricted between the transformative nature of the Tengus and Strikers. Strikers would be an unbelievably good counter. If those Starker VXs got into the skies unchallenged, these Guardian Tanks is just blap later. See you later. You're done. Bye. <laughs> Uh, that's that's all it would be. That would be the end of story, end of discussion for all of those Guardian Tanks. But now we have uh, two Apollo Fighters and three Multigunner IVs standing in the way. It looks like one Crocopter does take a lot of volley from that anti-aircraft fire tsunami tanks engaging on the front with with tank rosters striker vx's are just kind of chilling down here uh, they're getting shot up from the tanks but also all of those cryocopters just bit the dust for like all those tangus got up into the skies with them and this is what i was talking about here comes the mass transform of the chopper vx's but here come the apollo fighters how much of a chase will they give how much chase will they give too much chase whoa too much chase too much and all three apollo fighters just went down one wreck two wreck three wreck all three of those apollo fighters just went down and they did not get a single striker not a single single one However, now it looks like there are two heroic level guardian tanks in the in what is left of this army. But oh my goodness, how much money did he just did Tony just lose in those in those cryocopters? He went from eight to three. He lost five cryocopters in that engagement. That's it. Those are expensive. Cryocopters are very expensive units. <laughs> and I mean, I realize that perhaps 
the, uh, the stresses of battle uh, took hold, but oh my, I'm gonna call, oh, hold the phone. We have a cryo blast going down, but a quick transform of those striker reactors into chopper mode does wind up saving them. Yuriko Omega could turn around and throw to start throwing these Apollo fighters out the sky. Don't really know why she didn't do that. Yuriko Omega's just kind of walking around, or f hovering, or floating, hovering, floating, I guess she's floating. <laughs> I guess it's floating since she's a psionic commando, but... Mm. Three cryocopters. I would honestly have to say, I think that's going to become the micro-fail of the game. I, I think that'll be the micro-fail, or the biggest micro-fail I've seen. Anyway, we have a spy coming out. So what is, what's Tony's game with this? What's he aiming to do? There's a very, very large Jap uh, Japanese Empire army bearing down on him with five wave force artilleries. Those things are so deadly. <laughs> oh, but they're getting a, whoa, okay. There goes the Conyard just gets absolutely blasted. Hands off that instant heroic status to that wave force artillery. What else can Tony really do? I don't think he can do anything. And he doesn't think so either. And taps out and seeds the game to superpower. GG on the side of both of these players. Very, very well played. I have to say, I think I think the micro fail did it. Tony losing those six cryocopters or five cryocopters. I think that was the micro fail of the game. I really do think that did it. And actually looking at the resource graph, there's actually not that much difference. Like it's, I mean, granted, Superpower held a he held a pretty good lead from around like the two minute-ish mark. And then up until Yeah, for he held about a six minute eco lead. But it looks like it did wind up leveling out there. Let's take a look. Yeah, or collected. It's nearly identical. <laughs> it's nearly identical, nearly identical average income per minute. It just because the harassment wound up letting Tony catch back up later in the game. And there, the proof is in the numbers right there. Efficiency and KD ratios very much in favor of superpower. And those wave force artillery, so you get, oh man, if you get up to that critical mass of Japanese units and you just don't quite have enough to uh as either of the allies or the soviets you don't have enough to kind of cripple that critical mass then well that's gg right then and there but very well played from both of these players very entertaining and that will conclude the end or that will mark the end of this replay cast so thank you guys so much for watching i do hope you have enjoyed and i'll see you in the next one and this is sniper signing out